Hi, Paula here with eXp Realty in beautiful North Vancouver. I'm a local realtor, love working with sellers. I've put together 20 of the most frequently asked questions and those questions start right now. Everyone always asks, when's a good time to sell my home? This question can't be answered with a simple response because it really depends on your situation. But as a rule of thumb, usually the spring is considered the best time of year to sell. Your home shows better, uh, things are blooming, and as well, it times well with the end of the school year so that families can transition from one home to another before the next school year begins. In some situations, however, the fall and winter can also be great months, and that really depends on a lot of factors. But in general, during those months, there's less inventory and buyers are much more serious. How is the market right now? A really common question. All sellers want to know how the market is before they go and list their home for sale. So all of these things you can actually research yourself, but it's really helpful to have a realtor as well since they've got their pulse on the market. Some of the things you want to look at is the average days on market for a listing, the market absorption, the sales to listing ratios, how many close transactions year over year are happening each month, the average sale price, and the average list to sale price ratio. So all of this you can actually try to research on your own or you can call on a realtor for their expert advice. What costs should I be aware of when selling? Your home has gotten a lot of appreciation over the years and now it's time to sell. There are some costs to keep in mind. First you've got the cost of getting your home ready for the market and when you go to close you're going to have your disbursement fees of your mortgage, you've got your legal fees, uh, your real estate commission fees, any property taxes that are outstanding, and if you live in a strata, your strata is going to have some fees associated with it, including your move in and move out fees. How much is my home worth? When owners want to know what the value of their home is, they usually have a picture that's slightly higher than what the market is willing to pay. So it's a good idea to consult a property appraiser or a realtor to get a little better idea because it's going to depend on so many factors. What is going on in the market? Is it a buyer or a seller's market? What's the average day for a home to be sold or the average price in your area and even neighborhood? What is your street like? How does your house compare to your neighboring house? All of those are questions that a professional can help you with. Sellers often want to know why assessed value is different than market value. The assessed value of your home is done specifically for tax purposes, which is very different than what the market is willing to pay for your home. And this is why home sellers will often see a difference and they wonder why. Sometimes it, your home may sell for substantially more than what your assessment value is and sometimes it'll sell for less. They're really not the same thing. Um, it only really gives you a clue as to if your home is worth more than your neighbors, but not necessarily what your home is worth. It's important to know what the difference is between sale price and a list price. A list price is what a property is being advertised as on the MLS, let's say. So that's what the property is being advertised to sell for. Versus a sale price is actually what the property sold for, what the market was willing to pay or what a buyer was willing to pay for that property under contract. So they could be very different and depending on markets, it could be much higher than what the list price is or much lower. But in a stable market with a good realtor, you should be able to get those prices pretty close to each other. How do you determine the value of my home? When determining the value of a home, realtors will typically create a comparative market analysis. And that typically looks at what homes have sold in your area or in your neighborhood in the past six to 12 months, that's in a stable market. In faster moving markets, that time frame may change a little bit. And when we compare homes, we're comparing the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, the age, the condition of the home, the street, among other factors, to come up with a number that we think would be suitable for what the value of your home is and what it should be listed for. And this analysis is typically provided to the sellers as well so that they can review it. Sellers often ask, should we price it a bit higher to leave room for negotiations? It's always a good idea to price your home as accurately as you can. Leaving room for negotiations can actually cost you buyers, buyers that won't come to look at your property because they find it's overpriced. If your home is priced properly, it will sell pretty close to that price. You don't need to be leaving um, extra room for those low ball offers. Home buyers today are very well educated. They'll know what the market price is and what the proper price is for your home. Should we price my home low to create lots of interest in bidding wars? Often home sellers will ask if they should price their homes lower than what the market value is in the hopes of creating a lot of buzz and having lots of offers come in. But that's a real risk. The problem is that if the market softens, that seller is gonna be stuck with a home listed at a price much lower than what they were wanting to accept. In addition, if the market is strong, there's a lot of fatigue among buyers. 
that have put in bids in multiple homes and lost out, they're immediately gonna see that this home is priced for multiple offers and may not wanna entertain that again. So it's always a better idea to price your home properly to what the market is willing to pay. How much commission do I pay my realtor? So commission is typically paid by the seller and the seller will pay both the buyer agent and the selling agent their share of the commission. Commissions are actually negotiable. However, most real estate agents have a commission that they work with and they don't tend to stray from that. You'll hear a lot of agents say, oh, well, you get for what you pay for when you're buying with a discounted realtor, but that's not necessarily true either. Just look at what your realtor has to offer. If they're professional, if they have a good reputation, and if you trust them, those are really the best variables you can go with. What communication should I expect from my realtor? Your realtor should be communicating with you in your preferred methods, whether that's email, text, or phoning, and a variety of those. And the frequency is really gonna depend where you, what stage you're at in the sales process. So at the beginning, you may be talking several times a day, and then as time progresses, it may move to weekly. Um, but what's most important is that you're not chasing your realtor. Your realtor should be there and should always be available and be following up with you. How will you market my home? When marketing a home, I typically have three stages. The first is before it hits MLS, so that's the coming soon stage. Then is that week when it just hits MLS, and then it's the weeks that follow. So you wanna create a lot of buzz before it hits MLS as a new listing that's coming, because that first week that it hits MLS is critical. You wanna be on social media, all your networks need to know about this listing, all your neighbors, it's gotta hit the maximum eyeballs. How should I prepare my home to get it ready to sell? Prepping your home for sale is an absolutely critical step. It'll help you sell it quicker and for top dollars. You only get that one chance, so make sure it's ready. First, you want to depersonalize it. So get out all the clutter, get out anything that makes a home feel too personal to you so that home buyers can picture themselves living there. Then attend to all that deferred maintenance. So that would be touch up paints, leaky faucets, anything else so that the home feels well taken care of. Then your street appeal. So make sure the hedges are trimmed and it looks beautiful from the outside. What are some simple upgrades to help sell my home? Some low cost uh, upgrades that will increase the value of your home would include uh, fresh paint, so using neutral colors, a curb appeal, so try to um, hedge your garden, cut your lawn, plant flowers, replacing your front door is huge. Get a beautiful front door, uh, replacing old hardware, so your, your um, sinks, taps and drawers. Small bathroom remodel is wonderful, and one that's a little more costly would be replacing the floors, but hardwoods definitely are the way to go. Do I need to disclose things that need repair or are deficient in my home? So it is important to be upfront and disclose any defects that you're aware of, whether it's a leaky roof or bad appliances or anything else that may be going on in your home. In British Columbia, we do have a property disclosure statement that your realtor will provide to you that you fill out. Um, another item is oil scans. Those are very important to do before you put your property for sale. So if you find any defects in your home uh, when you're filling out the sheet, try to attend to them. It'll help selling your home a lot smoother. How do I get my home ready for showings? Getting your home ready for showings is an absolutely critical step. You want those buyers to want your home over the competition. And to do that, you're gonna first wanna depersonalize it and declutter it so that the home feels nice, clean, and fresh, and not too personal. They can actually picture themselves living there. So get those trophies out, get the family photos out, and then do a nice soft stage. You get some fresh linens, some fresh towels and sheets, or hire a professional stager. Make sure the home is spotless, all the lights are turned on, the yard is clean, so that it shows its best. Are open houses necessary? Open houses in the Vancouver area are super critical, especially that first week that your listing goes live on MLS, that first and second week, really important to have open houses. They impede your life, however. You don't want your pets there, you don't wanna be there, and hopefully your tenants won't be there. It's also ideal if your listing agent can be present because they know your home best. Can we be home during showings? Please do not be home when there's a showing. It should be avoided if at all possible. Also, your pets shouldn't be home. Your cleaning lady shouldn't be home. The home should be empty so that a potential buyer can picture themselves living there. If you're there, it's hard for them to picture that and it's gonna be really uncomfortable for them to ask questions. 
why isn't anyone coming to view my home? The most common reason is that your home is priced too high. And so what's happening is buyers are going to other homes in your area that are priced lower and buying before they even look at yours. A good way to fix that is simply lower the price. That will also refresh your MLS listing so that it hits more buyers. It could be the curb appeal, so try to work on that or just a difficult street to sell. So that again will be reflected on the price. Make sure your realtor is also doing the best marketing possible to get buyers seeing your property. What should I do with a low ball offer? Sometimes low ball offers happen. Don't take offense to it. Don't take it personally. You can counter it and ask for the price you wanted and the terms you wanted. You never know. They may be a serious buyer that we're just trying to see what they could get. What stays in the home? Can I keep my appliances? Sellers always are curious what is supposed to stay in the home when they sell. Typically, appliances do stay, and that should be noted in the contract in addition to which appliances are staying, so the brand, etc. Make sure that you don't switch those out. TV brackets, another questionable one since that's screwed to the wall, that should be noted in the contract. Uh, chandeliers and lamps, anything that's screwed to the walls or the floor is assumed to be staying. So if you want to take it with you, make sure you have it in writing. What does contingent to sale mean? Often when a home buyer is putting in an offer for a home, they will make a contingent to them selling their existing home. So the sale of their home must be done prior to the contract with your home moving forward. That would be a sale contingency. What is contingent to inspection? A subject to inspection is one of the most common items you'll see in a sales contract. The buyer wants to inspect the property to ensure that it's in acceptable condition. So they will have it inspected. Once it's inspected and they remove that subject, your contract moves forward to the next phase. During that time, if they find uh, deficiencies, they may request a reduction in price or they may ask for you to repair or maintain them. What happens if the bank's appraisal value is lower than the sale price? Unfortunately, when the appraisal value comes in too low, you're really limited in options. Either the seller can bring down their price so that they can bring it closer to what the appraisal value was, or the buyer can make up that difference with cash. Alternatively, both the seller and buyer can renegotiate the price of the contract so that they can find a happy medium. Unfortunately, often the contract is cancelled and it lapses and the home sale no longer um, will proceed. And then last option that's really difficult to do is to challenge the appraisal, so maybe get another opinion. Can my realtor recommend other professionals I may need? As real estate professionals, we work with other professionals. So yes, of course we can provide referrals to other folks that may be able to help throughout the process, including lawyers, mortgage brokers, handymen, movers, you name it. Make sure you ask your realtor for that kind of help. What other tasks do I need to be aware of during the sales process? When you're getting ready to move, these are the things you need to remember. You need to book those movers, book your appointment with your lawyer or notary for the closing, uh, make sure you uh, cancel the insurance in your existing home and get insurance for your new home. Make sure you transfer those utilities, that would be your electricity, your gas, your telecom. If you have tenants, ensure that they've been given proper notice. And if you have any other contractors, housekeepers, gardeners, maybe pest control, you need to make sure those contracts have finished so that they know that you're moving. And lastly, make sure you get your mail forward to your new address.